Hey everyone, Raj here. Today I'm going to be doing a video in the Sense of the Week series. So you may not know about this series, I haven't done this video in a while. And basically this is where I show you every fragrance that I've been wearing during the week. Um, or maybe the last 10 days or a couple of weeks or depending on how long I haven't done this video for. So yeah, um, past 7 days, 10 days, I've been wearing mainly decants. Um, sometimes I'll I leave my full bottles and go to my samples and it's kind of like a cyclical thing. So let's start off with um, my scent of the day. So today's scent, I'm going with the latest fragrance from Guerlain and that is L'Homme Ideal. So just picked up a sample yesterday actually. So this is actually the first time I'm wearing it. And uh, what are they saying here? They've got citruses, they've got fresh almonds, they've got woods. And this is an interesting fragrance, I have to say. Um, I get a kind of like a spice bomb feel with it. It's slightly spicy. Um, definitely a little bit of um, citrus and powdery almonds in there. It's an interesting fragrance. Um, some of the reviews on online, some people haven't been too keen on it. I don't really know why, because it's not a bad smelling fragrance. It's good. It's a new direction. It's different to some of the older style Guerlain fragrances. Well, and obviously have to go in a new direction. They're not always going to produce the classics like Habi Rouge and Vetiver. They have to go down a new new, new path. And I think they've done that with Lom Ideal, with um, Landstand de Guerlain. And I'm looking forward to wearing this sample. Actually, I've got given three. So I've got another, uh, this is a 1ml. So I've got another 2ml to go through. Yeah, a good, a good fragrance. I could see myself buying it. I'm not sure I love it after one wearing, but... I've only worn it once. So yeah, looking forward to testing it out a little bit more. Next up is a, another new release, um, but hasn't actually been released um, outside of France, I don't think. And this one is Dior en Parfum. So it doesn't actually say Om on it, but this is in the in the, uh, in the Om series. Released in France, I think it's going to come out soon worldwide. So I was really looking forward to trying this one. I'm a big fan of Dior I'm Intense. I like Dior Om. I don't have the bottle, but I do like it. Um, so I was really keen to see what Dior had were trying to do with this fragrance. Okay, so two things. First of all, scent-wise, yeah, it's it's really good. I do like it a lot. It is different enough to own this and own Dior Om and Dior Om Intense. But it's gone in a almost, um, the iris is kind of still there, but it's joined by a very deep wood accord. Um, a leather note, which doesn't play a huge part on my skin. And to be honest, I've only worn this like two, three times. Um, but I do like what, what's there. I do like what's there. There's a cocoa somewhere in the background. And of course, that note has to be there. Um, it wouldn't be in the Diorum series otherwise, unless it's the Cologne version. But... Yes, yeah, solid release. I really do like the scent. Here's the problem, and it is the performance, which doesn't make any sense because this is a parfum strength. So if you imagine you have an eau de parfum, and then you have one step above, is this this is what um, this concentration is. And sometimes parfums they don't shout on your skin, but they definitely sort of linger and develop really well over time, uh, over a long period of time. This one doesn't really do that. Or maybe it does, I'm just slightly unsure, because I wore this two, three times, and after about four or five hours, it started to just disappear. I couldn't detect it at all. One day, though, I came home, and somebody said to me, oh, you smell nice, that's a, that's a good fragrance, which kind of took me by surprise a little bit, because this was coming up to, you know, um, probably around 10, 11 hours after I applied this. And I couldn't detect it at all. So maybe it's one of those fragrances that the wearer can't really detect it after a few hours, but other people do. Looking forward to wearing a little bit more anyway. But at, the, at this moment, I'm a little bit disappointed in the performance. Um, so next up is a fragrance that I've had this decant for a long, long time, but um, only recently gone back to it. And this is from, um, well, the fragrance is called Parfumerie Bruckner Oud 1. This is actually made by the brand Mikhaev, and it was um, stocked or sold in Germany in this shop called Parfumerie Bruckner. I believe now this is sold in New York in Oswald, and I think maybe the name has changed, I'm not 100% sure, 
But uh, whatever it is, this is a beautiful scent. It really is. This is fruity, boozy, um, a nice gourmand oud. That is basically what this fragrance is. It performs really um, nicely in the first few hours. It kind of dies off a little bit, unfortunately, but kind of lingers around for seven, eight hours. It's very addictive. I remember when the fragrance bros, when Jared did his uh, oud vemba. He spoke quite highly of this, and I think maybe they split it or something like that. And I can see why he loves it, because this is, um, the sweetness in here reminds me of a kind of mainstream style sweetness that you might find in maybe, uh, maybe like a, a diesel fragrance or one million, but done in a much better way, in a sort of less obnoxious way, if that makes sense. Really classy fragrance, and I'm going to test it a little bit more. As you can see, I'm pretty much halfway through my decant. And um, yeah, I I've added this to my to buy list. So I've got a little to buy list, which I've just put together today, actually. <laughs> so I've got about five or six, uh, maybe seven or nine, actually. <laughs> There's quite a few fragrances I added to my to buy list, and this is one of them. One that is number one on the to buy list, and to be honest, is likely to be my next purchase. It's from the house of Roger Parfums. Roger Dove is the um, guy behind this brand, and this one is Enigma. His, I was about to say his latest release. Actually, there has been uh, another one, uh, Reckless, but I think this was the release before that. And this particular version is the Eau de Parfum version. So some people get confused by this. So there are two versions. There's a 100 ml, which has a normal plastic cap and is an EDP, and there's a 50 ml, which is a, a parfum version, a higher concentration, with ha which has the black crystal Swarovski top, um, but that price is a little bit um, on the crazy side. And I have actually compared the two. I prefer this version. I prefer the EDP. Um, it kind of lasts, actually, a little bit longer than the parfum, um, strangely. And I don't really think there's a huge amount of uh, deviation between the two, and the price um, hype, I don't really feel is justified. So I'm waiting for something to go in my favor. I've uh, just sat an exam. I'm hoping to pass that. The results come out in a few weeks' time. And I said to myself, if I pass that, I am getting this fragrance. The opening is just sublime. It's so luxurious with this kind of boozy, creamy style, um, kind of nutty cognac accord. It's joined in there by subtle spices, um, which kind of are in there from the opening blast, actually. Nice black pepper I get, maybe a bit of cardamom also. There's also a kind of green, wet, mossy style of cord that comes in after a couple of hours into the base. Um, I don't find this an incredibly complex scent. Um, I, I mean, there are lots of notes going on, but it doesn't deviate too far away from this, the opening blast. But what a, what a scent, uh, very different. A lot of people, a lot of accusations people throw at, um, especially fragrances which are expensive, is the accusation of originality. You know, it's like, if you're not original, you're not good. And Roger Parfum, the brand, the, a lot of the fragrances there are, yes, similar to existing fragrances. A lot of Guerlain fragrances as well. He spent 20 years of his life working for Guerlain. And if you do something, and but you do it better, I'm fine with that. Not everyone can be original. For me, though, this is actually quite unique, and I've never actually smelled anything like that. But so, um, yeah, this is pretty damn good. Next up, uh, a fragrance, again, that I've gone back to. As you can see here, the decant is pretty much coming to an end. And this is Bois d'Argent from Christian Dior's Privé collection. I think this means silver wood. And I wore this once last week. And for the f and on that occasion, it smelled the best than it had ever smelled before in the past. It was kind of a cool, um, cool day. Not too hot, not too cold. And this just is very luxurious, and it's a nice, um, I call it a cloudy iris. I don't know if that makes sense, a cloudy iris, a milky, creamy iris in there with a touch of myrrh and um, a little bit of smoke, but not really too uh, dominant in this. Only if you kind of put your hand into your, your arm or wherever you've, you've sprayed it. Um, an easy scent to just spray all over, and it lasts a really long time, like I'm talking um, 12, 14 hours, that kind of thing. It just keeps going and going. I, I don't know. I, I'm tempted to buy it. I'm tempted to buy it. But um, there's maybe a few others in there that I, I'd prefer. 
or prefer to get before I get this. Uh, so, the first full bottle which I'm going to be showing, this is from the house of Ormond Jane. This fragrance actually doesn't belong to me, um, but I have been wearing it, and this is Ormond Jane Ormond Man. I'm not sure it's going, really going to pick up. This is actually the old bottle design, um, which is a good thing because I don't really like this plastic cap too much, um, but this is a really superb, an older gentleman style fragrance. Obviously, I'm in my, I'm 27, but I definitely feel there's a maturity that you need to kind of wear this. I kind of thought of it as a fragrance for James Bond, and actually I was watching a review by Katie Puckrick, and she said, she kind of said a similar thing. This has uh, the, the, the signature Pink Pepper Accord from Ormond Jane, which is used in quite a lot of her fragrances, which is really great, actually. I love it. It's not really spicy. It's kind of like a, it's kind of a wet, fresh spiciness. Um, this was one of the first fragrances in Western perfumery, or maybe the first to use oud, um, but it doesn't play a huge role. It develops into a nice spicy woody fragrance with a bit of smoky vetiver in there, but it's extremely well balanced, and a lot of Ormond Jane fragrances are quite well balanced, They're really skillfully put together. I don't know if Linda Pilkington is actually the perfumer or whether she's kind of like gives direction, but whatever it is, this is a great house. I know that Greggy boy, Greg, uh, a fellow UK uh, reviewer, is a fan of this house. And he tried a fragrance, he bought a fragrance called Sarina, which he featured in his most recent haul video, um, which I tried for the first time yesterday. And I was actually asking him, have you tried it? Because I really liked it. And it uh, turns out he's bought it. So yeah, good scent. I really like that. A final scent. Um, this is another new fragrance in the mainstream market. This is from Chanel. And this is Chanel, uh, Bleu de Chanel, the Eau de Parfum version. So there's the bottle, same design. This is the Eau de Parfum version. This one, uh, Dior Homme Parfum and Guerlain Long Ideal. These were the three fragrances I was looking forward the most to trying uh, in the mainstream market. And to be honest, um, I prefer the original. I prefer the EDT. And I don't have that bottle anymore. I decided to sell it. I might buy this one, um, but really, I think it's I think it's decent. I, I don't think it's um, better than the original. It's different. Uh, it's just more expensive. I don't really know why. It's just a different fragrance. The kind of earthy, um, kind of generic, fresh uh, accord that was injected into the EDT um, is still kind of here. But there is a, a nice, actually a really nice incense note and sweet amber accord that develops into the dry down of this fragrance. It's just the opening I find really bland, but the dry down actually is pretty good. Um, again, I need to wear this a little bit more, but um, I was a little bit underwhelmed. Um, worth trying though, you know, it's always worth trying new things. And um, I was quite lucky to get this sample actually, it hadn't been released in the store, um, but the guy just handed me a sample when I asked about the release date. So there you go. So guys, over to you. As always, this um, my channel is always about kind of uh, me and you as well as the viewer. What have you been wearing this week, or what are you planning on wearing next week? Or, you know, do you plan what fragrances you wear? Um, have you been wearing decant? Have you been wearing full bottles? Whatever it is, let me know. And have you tried any of these? Do any of these sound interesting to you, even if you haven't tried them? Uh, yeah, so that's all from me. Thanks for watching as always. Take care guys and bye.